So I'm a protein biochemist and cell biologist. And I've always really been interested in the signaling pathways that let cells make decisions and respond to their environments. As a PhD student, I trained in a cell biology lab and I was really interested in nutrient signaling and how cells interpret nutrients in their environment and decide whether to grow or not to grow. Um, and so that uh, led me to a collaboration in grad school with a structural biology lab that did cryo-EM and we discovered and characterized a new protein complex uh, that regulates nutrient signaling in mammalian cells. Um, and so from there, for my postdoc, I decided to move to UCSF to work with Peter Walter, really to continue to ask questions about how these large protein complex molecular machines um, are able to interpret their environment and make decisions. And one of the new frontiers in this field is beginning to understand how conformational change in proteins is an important way that signals are communicated. All cells in our body contain highly conserved machinery that lets them sense and respond to environmental stressors. And this machinery is absolutely critical for cellular survival in dangerous or stressful conditions. But this machinery can also have this feature of getting stuck in an on state even after the stressors have gone away. And this is a hallmark of a wide variety of different age-related diseases, ranging from neurodegeneration to cancers. And so I'm fascinated by the molecular machinery of a specific stress response called the integrated stress response. This is a very generic pathway present in mammalian cells, present all the way down in the single-celled yeast, um, that lets cells sense a wide variety of stresses ranging from nutrients to uh, viruses to mitochondrial stress and protein stress via four different specific sen sensors. And these sensors all converge on a central uh, decision maker. This is a protein complex called EIF2B. So this center de central decision maker has the important job of activating the integrated stress response. And what that does is it halts the process of protein production in cells. This basically lets cells stop a lot of their energy consuming activity and reroute that energy towards stress responsive gene expression. So EIF2B is a large heterodecamer. It's composed of 10 different protein subunits, which are all color coded in different colors in this model. And EIF2B has this important feature, which is that it's activated and inactivated by a conformational change. So this conformational change is defined by rotation around a central axis that looks kind of like the flapping of butterflies' wings. So when EFTB is active, it looks like a butterfly with its wings up, and we call this the active A state. And when EFTB is inactive in response to stress, uh, the wings fold into this down state, and we call this the I state or wings down state. And we wanted to understand how is this conformational change communicated all across this protein complex? What, are the, what is the allosteric mechanism of this conformational change? And this is a really important thing to understand, one, because it's um, kind of amazing that this conformational change can be communicated all across um, this large uh, 500 kilodalton and 10 subunit protein complex. And we'd also like to understand um, how conformational change is regulated so that we can correct uh, chronic activation of the integrated stress response um, in the context of disease. To do this, we had to turn to a technique that reports on protein conformational dynamics. So usually we see um, techniques that can report on one single static structure. But we worked with Susan Marcus's lab at UC Berkeley to use a technique called hydrogen deuterium exchange mass spectrometry. This is a really powerful technique that gives us a picture across all of EIF2B sequence space. What are the local elements that undergo conformational change that might be coordinating and driving conformational change across the whole complex. And so we performed an experiment comparing EIF2B in its active wings up A state and its inactive wings down I state. And we identified that there was a single region of the sequence that had different behavior in these two states from our HDXMS data set. We were very excited to see 
by looking at existing cryo-EM structures, that this single alpha helix, which lies at the core of the EIFTB complex, um, at the position of the fulcrum of the rotational motion that defines the two states, this alpha helix underwent this conformational change um, in which the side chains made different interactions in the two states. And it appeared that this really was acting in a switch-like manner. And through a variety of other experiments, including biochemical experiments, um, cellular assays, and cryo-EM, we were able to show that this helix acts like a switch, we named it the switch helix, and that the position of this switch determines both EI2B's global conformation as well as ISR signaling state in cells. And so we we're excited about this discovery because one, it provides a new avenue to uh, design drugs that can rescue this chronic ISR signaling state, which is a hallmark of so many different diseases. And it also gives us a tool to be able to program ISR signaling in cells by making structure-guided, rationally designed mutations, um, which will help us to understand what, at the cell biological level, um, underlies the sort of maladaptive um, consequences of having a chronic ISR and why is this so um, so often the cause of age-related diseases.